Good afternoon, everybody. This is Brian Owens, SBO Footwear. Just wanted to start this new series called Behind the Shot. And essentially, if you guys have uh, on our Facebook page, our fans, if you found our, or noticed the, the shot recently of Mia, in fact, she's probably swimming behind me here. Um, just wanted to kind of give you some insight as to kind of how the shot came out, uh, kind of came down, some of the techniques and some of the things that I did, some basic stuff. By no means is this no, going to be a uh, Number one, a you know a full-length educational video. I mean, I'm just going to kind of throw some tidbit, tidbits at you, things, but uh, um, sort of how-to. Um, it, it's not a it's not a real long. You know, most of these video clips from here on out that I'll post will be two to five minutes in length, or whenever I'm done kind of imparting some things to you. Um, so essentially, we're at St. Louis Zoo. Obviously, it's an amazing place. If you haven't been, I would, I would definitely highly recommend it. Um, one of the things that we've got here is we have a, uh, not really an aquarium. An aquarium is a scenario where we, um, it's all enclosed. Sort of the most difficult thing here is the fact that it's open to the sky, just above us. So you're essentially walking through the plexiglass area. Um, so that presents a number of different challenges. You have to really, just like any other photography aspect, uh, a shot, you have to kind of pay attention to the, um, you have to pay attention to the light, what kind of cloud, you know, whether it's cloudy or sunny. Um, first of all, from a technical standpoint, you always want to turn your flash off if you're shooting in a situation like this, whether it's an aquarium or whether it's a scenario like this where you're kind of, if there's any possibility of the, the flash sort of reflecting uh, from or, or through against the, the plexiglass and glass. So turn to suppressing that flash is key. Um, the other thing that we want to do, most of the time, especially with an aquarium shot, is the fact that these fish are going to be moving, okay, and they're going to be moving fast. Um, just some parameters, and that's all I can offer in, in a short video clip like this. Um, I would I would suggest no no uh, no slower than one two hundred fiftieth of a second when it comes to your shutter speed. That's number one, because these guys, as you can see behind me, they're swimming very fast, okay. Um, as we talk about in all of our beginner classes, the other aspect is whenever you tend to crank up that shutter speed, what you lose is the amount of time that you allow light through the shutter. Okay, so you have to compensate for that somehow, and that somehow just happens to be your ISO. So the ISO values you're going to find in situations like this or any sporting shot um, are going to be conversely. You're going to have to, as the shutter speed goes up, so will the ISO. Okay, so. Higher ISO, the shot that I shot in particular yesterday that I, uh, that I posted on our fan page happened to be that the settings there were 1 500th of a second and a 3200 ISO value. So 1 500th of a second and 3200 ISO. Um, when it comes to if you've got any color correction, I set my color balance to neutral. Okay, and that's not to be confused with white balance. White balance, you'll just have to kind of either throw it on auto white balance or in a case like I did, for those of you that know me or have attended my classes, you know that I pretty much live in, I'm shooting in JPEG, a cloudy white balance, okay? So uh, you're perfectly fine starting off with a shot like this by going to a, a cloudy a white balance or an auto white balance, just simply let the camera determine that. What you need to focus on uh, key is to avoid seeing yourself in the shot and not the fish and or you in the fish unless you're intended, intending to do that. Okay. So, um, your most difficult challenge is again is going to be the, the reflective aspect of this, um, and the fact that you know for most of us, me is kind of posing for us. For most of us, if you have the ability to, to shoot this in manual, you want to set your f-stop or your aperture number to no it's no larger than a five to a five point six. Okay, you want to allow as much light in as possible. All right. Um, the other challenge too, if you, once you kind of practice this and kind of get into it, is the fact that, um, I don't know that you'll be able to see it in this video or not, but it's just after feeding time, okay? So the cloudy, uh, the, the water rather, tends to be a little more cloudy, all right? So those are, those are some of the subtle things that you have to look for and kind of pay attention to if this kind of shot interests you, okay? So typically, again, just to kind of reiterate, uh, five, five to 5.6, or as low as you can go, really, when it comes to your aperture uh, number, all right? Um, you're, you're, gonna, 
you're going to have a tendency to go to a uh, at least the 250th of a second and a higher ISO. Right? Um, again, most of the time too, the last thing that I want to just kind of point out is the fact that you typically you don't want to take this kind of a shot um, straight, you know, you're going to have to vary whether you shoot it straight on. I was going to say you don't want to take it straight on, sometimes that works. So that being said, this is our first video, we expect many more to come. Um, this will also be posted on our YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed it. By no means was it professional or perfect, but um, if we can provide some insight, we would love to do that. Have a good day, everybody.